Hello, good afternoon. Oh, I must apologize for being so late. <laughs> well, sometimes life is quite busy, even here in the province. Do you know, it's a reflection this afternoon, given that it's a rainy day outside, through a cyclone or depression going across the zone at the present moment. It's a day off for government workers and schools because of the imminence of maybe catastrophe. But when I first came to the Philippines, one of the biggest, I suppose, shell shocks was looking out of the window of my bus, which was heading up here, north of Manila, some six hours drive. I was greeted by what appeared to be abject poverty. Now I've grown to realize that, yes, it takes a lot of money when you haven't got much to achieve something. But it not only is it reflected in the, the little buildings that are scattered along the side of the road, almost knocked together with sellotape, but in the buildings themselves, as you go through town proper, how the new ones are spick and span for a few weeks. And after a few weeks, they start to get a bit of mold on them, a bit of algae, and obviously road dust on the structure itself, which doesn't take long after 12 months to look like a, a little bit of a neglected building. And that is the point here in Asia, especially. You notice it more often because when you're on holiday here, you don't actually look up at buildings. You don't see the gutters that are overflowing or even broken. You notice, of course, here in the Philippines, all the, what I call Jollibee spaghetti down the road. And what I'm referring to is the infrastructure of pole after pole, cluttered with hundreds of different wires going down the road. And you think, how on earth does a telephone man fix a problem there? But somehow they do. Might take them a little longer, but they do finally find the fault. But the thing is that also, when a telephone is no longer needed and it's pulled out from a property, those pieces of cable are just left hanging, often down onto the roadway or even onto the footpath. So you have to be aware of where you're putting your feet. But pedestrians are not number one importance here in the Philippines. Yes, in the road code, yes, you are, just like overseas. But try walking across a pedestrian crossing here. You put your life in your own hands. You have to be totally aware of the cars, not only coming on the side you're walking, but the ones that are overtaking on the side that you're about to go on, that are coming the other way when you're looking at the traffic coming towards you. A very dodgy time. You have to have your arms up here and stop there. And try, of course, if you're a foreigner, you do stand out a little bit better. And I don't think too many people want to hit a foreigner. They're thinking, hmm, that might cost a lot of money to pay them off. But that's not really my thought for the day. My thought for the day is that for those that build homes for their loved ones, for their chosen per partner, their wife, their girlfriend, it has a double or even triple effect on life itself here. One, of course, it provides a nice comfortable environment for you, the foreigner, living in the home that you've designed, hopefully, with the modern conveniences of back home. Hot water, maybe, flushing toilet, and maybe the latest gadgets, double door, fridge, uh, a ginormous gas stove with an, maybe facility for electric as well, big oven, maybe a double oven depending on how you are cooking. But all of these things add comfort to you. 
And we forget very quickly that as we look around at those that share the home with you, it becomes quite apparent that they're not... It's not that they're not appreciative, it's that they just haven't taken it on board. It's just part and parcel of living with a foreigner, as far as they're concerned. But slowly over time, what happens is that they start to show signs of appreciation. The fact that they have a nice, clean environment to live in, one where all mod cons are involved, things that enable their lives to be super, super in the fast lane. And that in itself can provide the, the lack of physical thank yous. Oh, wow, that looks good. But you're reminded that, remember, you built the house. It's your home. As much as it's going to be her house, eventually sitting on her land. So, when you look around your property, and you marvel at what you've done with your small amount of savings and maybe regular payments from your local government agencies, insurance companies as well. Um, it pays to remind yourself how lucky you are. And there's an expression in Australia, you don't know how lucky you are, mate. And it was a promotion catch line to encourage people to come and explore and wander and enjoy Australia. So, likewise, I suggest you don't know how lucky you are until you come to the Philippines. When you realise what is achievable on what is, back home, a very meagre amount of money. This home, originally, maybe cost me sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars Australian. It got me into the house, livable, functional. Not what I would call super, super wonderful. No tiles on the floor at the time. But nevertheless, away from the elements, all mod cons working. But as time's gone on, we've put tiles on the floor, we've painted it, we've plastered it, we've put fancy lights here and there, and it's become a home. And that's important, whilst many of you say, oh, why build them a home? Why not rent? Well, of course, when you find somebody that you want to live with, while you are alive, we're not much good when we're dead. It's always nice to think that we've created our own little nest, our own little comfort zone, where we can feel comfortable. Big screen TVs. I say TVs because sometimes you get a free one included in the promo, which in this case sits above the fridge in the, in the kitchen, in the open plan kitchen. Sometimes it's turned on, sometimes it's just a luxury to have it playing religious music or the latest pop music for the girls. And I look around and I say, you don't know how lucky I am to be here in the Philippines experiencing the quietness of no drama from Dumaguete. I wonder why. I wonder what's the silence caused by it. Not so many girls doing meet my best friend either. I think the trolls are getting to some of these channels and they're not so eager to pump out the daily, weekly videos. So, we need a bit of drama. Where can we find some drama? Tim Kaye's mediocre. Uh, all those other ones that we can't mention are just attacking Filipino women. Well, not a great idea, but I suppose if you're in America, it doesn't really matter. You can say anything you want, 
and nobody will challenge it, least of all another channel. So, I hope that your day, as it starts to end here in the Philippines and begin overseas, is going to be a happy one. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday and who knows what Wednesday will be. Oh, that's right. The man with the granite arrived this morning for the bench tops. Well, he didn't actually arrive with the granite, but he came to remeasure and to give us a new price, which is actually about the same as what he asked for last time, some two years ago. But I gave him the order, so he's going to put one side in. And then when he's done that and we're happy with what he's done, we will then order the other side. And boy, we will be spick and span. And I'm going for something a little different. I'm going to see if I can find something like Morrison James' handmade colourful tiles, about four inches square, and make that my splashback in the kitchen for the wow factor. Again, put in a little bit of yourself into your home doesn't matter when you're not here and they pull them all out and put some dull, boring colour back up. But the point is, it's about enjoying what you've got around you and enjoying life while you are here to enjoy it. After all, what's the point of retirement unless we have a happy day each day? I hope you do. Bye now.